checked in. It's the raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls. Raggy dolls. Made imperfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the raggy dolls and say I just don't care. Mr. and Mrs. Grimes were on honeymoon, cruising the Mediterranean. Little did they know the Raggy Dolls had come along too. The ship had docked on the island of Crete, and the Raggy Dolls were busy making plans. What is there to see on Crete? said Sad Sack. The la 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 labyrinth, said High Five. The what? said Sad Sack. The labyrinth, said Back to Front. It's a sort of underground maze. Very easy to get lost down there. Where's the fun in that? grumbled Sad Sack. I'd rather stay by the pool. Legend has it that a strange creature once lived in the labyrinth, said Dotty. Yeah, said Back to Front. A ghastly monster with the body of a man and the head of a bull. And woe betide anyone who comes face to face with the Minotaur. Who were, said Lucy. Sad Sack's right. Let's just stay by the pool. Don't be silly, laughed Dotty. That was thousands of years ago. And it's only a legend, agreed Hi-Fi. May we, said Claude. And besides, on the island, maybe we can find a restaurant. I am, how you say, up to here with the peanuts and crisps. Even Sad Sack could see the sense of this. All over the ship, there were bowls and bowls of them, and the Raggy Dolls had eaten very little else. All right, he said at last. The labyrinth it is if only to get away from the peanuts and crisps. I think we should take some with us, said Princess. Whatever for, said Dotty. So that we don't get lost, said Princess. Remember Hansel and Gretel? Of course, said Dotty. We can leave a trail. Good thinking. Come on, chaps, let's go ashore. <whistles> Meanwhile, Mr. and Mrs. Grimes were strolling around the ruins of the palace at Knossos, admiring the colourful frescoes and all the archaeological finds on display. It's amazing, isn't it? said Mr. Grimes. They built all this 4,000 years ago, and if it hadn't been for that volcano erupting, who knows what these people might have achieved? It's all very interesting, Ozzie, said Mrs. Grimes, but I really could do with some exercise. I've had enough of being a tourist. Couldn't we go off somewhere by ourselves? Well, yes, I suppose so, but, but where? Anywhere. Let's hire some bicycles and go exploring. Oh, all right then, said Mr. Grimes, not very keen. The Raggy Dolls arrived just as they were leaving. Hiding behind a row of big pots, they made their way to the entrance of the labyrinth. Perfect, said Dotty. It's closed for lunch. Let's go in. Watch out for minotaurs, chuckled back to front. The Raggy Dolls set off deep into the network of underground passages, and everywhere they went, they left a trail of crisps and peanuts so that they could tell where they'd been. It was just like a maze, lots of corners and turns, some leading to other passages, and some leading nowhere. Oh, no, said Sad Sack, face to face with a stone wall. Not another dead end. Back we go again, said Dotty. The Raggy Dolls retraced their footsteps, following the line of crisps and peanuts. Keep together, everyone, said Dotty. No straggling. Where's back to front, said Hi-Fi suddenly. The Raggy Dolls stopped. There was no sign of him. Just then, a gruff voice came out of the darkness. The Raggy Dolls froze in horror. Mm, who dares to enter the lair of the mm, Minotaur? It's the Minotaur, gasped Lucy, and her knees began knocking in terror. It can't be, this Dotty. It's only a legend. How can you be sure, moaned Sad Sack. 
Help! Help! Called back to front. Oh, no! Wailed Princess. It must be the Minotaur, and he's got back to front. No, he hasn't, chuckled back to front, stepping out from where he'd been hiding. That was not funny, stormed Dotty. We were really scared. Yes, said Princess. How could you be so insensitive? Just look at poor Lucy. Lucy's eyes were still wide with fear, and her knees kept knocking like an alarm clock. It was only a joke, protested back to front. Just a bit of fun. It was a perfectly beastly trick, said Dotty, and you should have known better. When Lucy had calmed down and back to front had apologised, they all decided it was time to go. We'd better find our way out of here before it fills up with tourists again, said Dotty, still cross with back to front. The ragged doll set off, following the trail of peanuts and crisps. But all of a sudden, right in the middle of where two passages crossed, the trail stopped. That's odd, said Dotty. Which way now? said Sadsack glumly. A good day, said Claude. I can hear something. The ragged dolls listened. Somewhere in the darkness, someone or something was munching crisps. Who's there? said Dotty gravely. A little lizard with a mouthful of crisps popped out of the shadows. He blinked and swallowed quickly. Oh, it's only me, he said cheerfully. How you do? You got any other flavor? Cheesy onion, smoky bake? I got crazy bomb for smoky bake. You've eaten our trail, complained Princess. Now we'll never find our way out. But the little lizard said he knew the labyrinth like the back of his hand, and in return for more crisps, he would show the ragged dolls another way. No props. It's a good way. No touristy peeps, he reassured them. The little lizard led the ragged dolls through a hole in one of the walls into a long, winding tunnel where no one had set foot for centuries. On and on they trudged, until at last they could see daylight. Thank you very much, said Dotty. I'm sure we can manage from here. It's my pleasure, but next time you bring some smoky bike, huh? We must have walked miles, said Sadzak when the lizard had gone. Up ahead, bright sunlight was streaming through a doorway. The ragged dolls were dazzled for a moment, but then they noticed a big, strange shape in the opening. The ragged dolls blinked, and suddenly they could see the silhouette of a man with a great big head and horns. Oh no, gasped back to front. It really is the Minotaur. And he fainted on the spot. What are we going to do? wailed Lucy. Nobody knew, but just then the Minotaur spoke. Honestly, Cynthia, you'd think if they were hiring bikes, the least they could do is supply a puncture repair kit. The ragged dolls gasped in amazement. It wasn't the Minotaur. It was Mr. Grimes, carrying a bicycle over his shoulder. Later that night, back on the ship, seven tired ragged dolls settled down to sleep. Back to front was still feeling a bit groggy. Are you feeling any better? Asked Lucy. Yeah, a lot better now. Thanks for taking care of me. That's what friends are for, said Princess. Mais oui, said Claude. We are the ragged dolls. All for one and one for all, n'est-ce pas? Yes, agreed Dotty. Even if some of us do have a rather peculiar sense of humour. I'll never do any scary jokes again, promised back to front. I know it was only Mr. Grimes, but I've never been so frightened in all my life. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, made imperfectly.